If you haven't done so yet, just make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. In this question, we are told that the decomposition of sulfuryl chloride is a first-order process. And of course, it's important to notice that this is a first-order process. We have written down an equation that will help us calculate the values asked for. This equation is based on a first-order reaction. And what we want to do is sort out what we know. So if we read on, we can see that the rate constant for this decomposition is 4.5 times 10 to the negative 2 inverse seconds. Now rate constant is symbolized by lowercase k. So we can say that the rate constant is equal to 4.5 times 10 to the negative 2 inverse seconds. In part A, we are told that we have an initial pressure of 450 torr. Now when you look at this symbol right here, the little subscript of zero means initial value. It's written in terms of concentration, but it turns out that we can plug in pressures as well, because concentration and pressure are proportional to one another. So we can say that the initial concentration, if you will, although it really is a pressure, is equal to 450 torr. And then they want us to determine the pressure after 60 seconds. So of course that means that T, time, is equal to 60 seconds. And therefore we're looking for this final pressure here. So what we'll do is plug in all the known values into the equation. On the right hand side, when we multiply the inverse seconds and the seconds, those units will cancel out. And then when we calculate the value on the right side, we get negative 2.7 without any units. We can then also compute the natural log of 450 on our calculator, which is about 6.11. Let's add 6.11 to both sides of this equation. So the right-hand side will become 3.41. And now the trickiest part, perhaps, of the algebra here is to finish solving for this A subscript T, which is the final pressure that we're looking for. And it turns out that the natural log has a base of E. And if you want to cancel out a logarithm, what you do is you raise both sides of the equation to whatever the base is. So let me show you what I mean by that. It might sound a little confusing. We're going to raise the left side to E. Or I should say we're raising E to the left side and then we're raising e to the right side. It turns out that that does cancel out the natural log on the left-hand side, and that leaves us with our final answer as being e raised to the 3.41. And if you punch that into your calculator, you're going to get about 30 as your final answer, and that's a pressure, and therefore it came out in tor. So this would be the correct answer to part A. In part B, we are asked to compute a time where the pressure declines to one-tenth its initial value. So let's try to understand what they mean by the pressure being one-tenth of its initial value. The initial value, again, for the pressure was 450 torr. The question notes that the final pressure is going to be one-tenth of the initial. So what you'll do is take one-tenth and multiply that by the initial pressure. And when you do that, you would get 45 torr. The rate constant, lowercase k, is still negative 4.5 times 10 to the minus 2 inverse seconds. And what we are looking for is the time in this case. So let's write out the same formula and plug in our known values. So what you want to do next is pick up your calculator and type this entire expression in. And when you do that, you should get about negative 2.30. And then to finish solving this for k, excuse me, to finish solving this for t, the time, we're going to divide both sides of this equation by negative 4.5 times 10 to the minus 2 inverse seconds. Of course, that will cancel it out on the right-hand side of the equation. When you divide, make sure that you put this quantity in parentheses 
the negative 4.5 times 10 to the negative 2. And when you compute that, you get about 51 seconds as the amount of time for the pressure to reach one-tenth of its initial value.